Hi there, hello everybody and welcome to this live stream called Three Simple Steps to Add At Least 25% to Your Revenue This Season Without Doing Any More Work. Think it's not possible? Well, let's find out, okay? So, um, let's uh, do the usual housekeeping. First of all, if you're joining me live, hello, welcome, let me know where you're joining me from. Say hi in the comments below. Use the comments box to post any questions you have during the live stream and I'll do my best to answer them as we go along. Um, if you're watching this on the replay, do hashtag replay so that I can come and say hello to you as well. All right, so um, you might want to grab a pen and paper for this, uh, this week's conversation because I'm gonna ask you some questions uh, and I'm gonna show you how you can add at least 25% to your revenue this season without doing any more work um, and you might want to write some stuff down. So with that said, let's let's dive in, okay? Let's go, let's get started. How to add at least 25% to your revenue this season without doing any more work. So let me ask you this, first of all, what would an extra 25% revenue, in revenue, in money, whatever that is for you, what would it mean to you personally? Hmm? what does this amount of money bring up for you you know would you like uh, to take a holiday would you would you sp spend it on a holiday would you help your children out in some way would you allow um, allow yourself to to do some renovations that you've been wanting to do that you haven't managed to do yet or does it bring up some negative stuff for you like well, if you're in the UK, for example, does an extra 25% in revenue take you over the VAT threshold? And that's gonna, you know, give you another thing to deal with and you don't really want to be dealing with that. And if you're outside the UK, what kind of limits does an extra 25% of revenue onto your business? What does it signal to you? So even though I've said, right, without doing more work do you secretly doubt that let's be honest right more money money is a, is a great kind of mirror that we can hold up to ourselves that brings out um, all of our kind of belief systems and thought processes and patterns that we habitually uh, use in our lives right and and even so even though i've said without any more work maybe you secretly doubt that Maybe you think that's not possible to, to add 25% to your revenue without doing any more work. And, and maybe you might be thinking to yourself, well, there'll be more laundry and there'll be more breakfast to cook and, and there'll be more guests to deal with. And actually, I don't really want any more of that. You know, I don't really want that. These unconscious beliefs put limits on our ability to create what we want. They get in the way and it's good to get them out you know, into the open so that you're at least conscious of why you haven't added an extra 25% to your revenue in the past, if, if you have desired that. And whatever I say, you could be thinking, well, that won't work for me. My situation's different. You know, we all have these thought processes and these patterns of thinking going on in our, going on in our lives. So I'd like to ask you, for just the purposes of this little exercise to put your natural skepticism and habitual responses just to one side for a little while, suspend your beliefs as I take you through the process of adding at least 25% to your income this season without more work. You know, anyone can do this as long as you have good reasons and you're motivated to do it. How do I know this? Because I've witnessed it so many times with our clients over the years and I did it myself many times over. So let's look now at what are the three simple steps to add an extra 25% to your income without doing more work. So if the goal is to, to add at least 25% to your revenue this year, without working harder, what are the three simple steps to do that? So let's do step one first, and this is easy, 
Well, it might be easy, you might find it difficult. Increase your prices by 10%. Just 10%. So whatever you're charging right now, increase your prices by 10%. Okay, so let me give you an example of what kind of money that looks like. So if you have five rooms, and I'm just using this as an example, you put your own figures to this, and this is why I ask you to get a pen and paper. If you were to increase your prices and you had five rooms and you were charging 100, whatever your currency is, doesn't matter about the currency, the number is 100, five rooms at 100 a night, then 50% annualized occupancy over the year, that means annualized occupancy rate, means that some weeks in the high season, you will be 90, 100% full, and some weeks in the low season, you'll have nobody. But annualized over the year, you can achieve 50% occupancy. You may be doing more than that, you may be doing less than that, but as a general rule of thumb, 50% occupancy is very, very achievable, spread out over the year. So if you had five rooms and you were charging 100 a night, Overall, you'd be making 91,250. And if you increase your prices by 10%, you would, you, you would be adding another 9,125, okay? So write down that. And I have some tools for you where you can get your number for your number of rooms and your average rate per night so you can see what your 50% occupancy number is. Once you know that, you've got like a baseline from which to to grow or not to grow it's up to you and if you're not there at 50% annualized occupancy you might want to grow to it and if you're already doing better than that this might not be relevant to you doesn't matter so if you had a five rooms 100 a night 50% annualized occupancy you'd be making 91,250 so if you increase your prices by 10% then you're increasing your revenue by 10% and you would make an extra 9,125. Okay, got that number? Okay, just check, see if we're all good there. Okay, let me know if you've got that number. Good, good. All right, next step then, step two, that was easy, right? So before we go on to step two, what would stop you, just think about this, what would stop you from increasing your prices by 10%? today right what would stop you from doing that you might you might think i can't do that because i'm already at the top end of my range for my my area and all of my competition you know they're all charging less than me and you know the stories that we tell ourselves you know oh, i can't do this because you know then i'd have to do more work right or, or i'd have to give more and i don't want to give any more or my guests would start expecting more from me if my prices were higher you know all these stories right <laughs> I've heard them all. I've told them to myself as well, right? What would stop you from increasing your prices? What are the stories going around in your head that would stop you from increasing your prices by 10% today? Write them down. You don't. You can share them if you want to in the comments, but just write them down so that you're, that you're conscious of them, right? Because what, what we make con conscious, we can change. We can, you know, it's neither right nor wrong. It's not good or bad. It just is what it is. And once we bring the unconscious into your consciousness, into our consciousness, we can then make different choices. We can then examine those belief systems and we can ask ourselves, you know, well, what if I didn't have to do more work? What if guests booked anyway? The, the big one about raising prices that I hear is, if I raise my prices, I won't get any bookings. Is that true? We don't know. We just don't know. So, Think about increasing your prices by 10%, okay? So that's step one. Step two is to charge for some of the things that you might be giving away for free right now, right? Still no more work. We haven't done any more work yet, have we? We didn't do any more work in increasing our prices. There was no more work to do, right? There's no more work here either. Think about what you could charge for that you are giving away for free. I have a list of about 50 things 
that, that uh, past clients have turned into mini revenue streams, which we call upsells. Upsells are things that you might be currently giving away for free that your guests will happily pay for. Now, you don't know that they'll happily pay for them until you try, until you try it. But I can tell you, in my experience, you know, working with clients for many years now, there's just, it never ceases to amaze me how amazed they are at what people will pay for. You'll be amazed at what people will pay for that you might be currently giving away for free. Okay, so if you want, um, if you want my list of 50 things that, um, that you can charge for, then let, let me know in the comments below and I'll get that to you. And if you, want your, if you want my tool on how to find out what your 50% occupancy base rate is with your number of rooms and your average rate per night, then just give me a yes please for that as well and I'll get that to you after the call. So think about the things that you're giving away for free that your guests might happily pay for. And it, and it will help you also to kind of expand your hospitality and put a value on it, put a dollar amount, a pound amount, a euro amount, whatever your currency is, it will help you to expand your sense of hospitality for your guests, put a value on it, and you will start to create little revenue streams, and little revenue streams add up to a big river. So, if you could do that, right, and let's say, just an example, that you were able to get 15% of your people, of your guests, to add some upsells, and you were able to increase your revenue by 15% just by adding upsells. And I can tell you, this is very conservative, very conservative. You would add, based on the five nights at 100 a night, 50% occupancy. This is the kind of baseline we're working to. You would be able to add an extra 13,688. So write that number down. We've got 9,125 for increasing your prices by 10%. And we've now got an extra 15% in upsells, things that your guests will buy, that you're currently giving, that you feel that you must give away for free. And that's gonna add an extra 13,688. Good so far? No more work yet, right? Still not doing any more work. So, so far, We've got a 10% price increase of 9,125. 9, We've got 15% in extra upsells of 13,688. So, so far, we have created an, ex, an extra 22,813. Pretty cool, huh? What could you do with that? So, what's the third step, right? Now, the third step is a little bit more challenging, can be a little bit more challenging, but you still won't have to do any more work. You just have to kind of shift your thinking a little bit. The third step is to reduce your commissions to online travel agents. So taking our example of 91,250, five rooms, 100 a night, 50% occupancy is our baseline. 91,250. Let's say, for the purposes of this exercise, that 30% of that revenue is generated by OTA bookings, online travel agency bookings, right? 30%. So that would mean you would be paying around 6,000 pounds, dollars, euros, whatever your currency is, in commission to online travel agents right? If 30% of your bookings, based on our baseline, 30% of your bookings came from online travel agents, you would be paying around 6000 a year in commission, okay? So if we could halve that, right? If we could halve that, so only 15% of your bookings come from online travel agents, you would save 3000 an extra 3000 in your commission bill. Make sense? Okay. So I'll talk about how you do that in a second. But all of that is completely doable for you. Completely doable. 
if you have good reason to add 25% to your revenue and if you're motivated because if you've got no reason to do it and it's kind of oh well it would be nice but you know can't be bothered that's fine too right it's no judgment here that's fine you're not going to do it right you're not going to do it unless you you're motivated and you've got good reasons to do it and and that's the key right that's the key with any change um, across the board you have to have find that motivation to do it you have to find really good reasons to want to do it okay so in total then right so you might want to write this down you've got your 10 percent price increase of 9125 you've got 15 percent in upsells selling things to guests that you weren't selling before that you were giving away you've generated an extra 13,688 based on 15 percent you've saved commission of 3,000 by halving the amount of bookings from a third 30 percent just under a third down to 15 percent you've saved 3,000 so you have increased your revenue by 25,813 and that represents on our baseline example that represents a 28% increase in revenue pretty surprising that isn't it and here's what you haven't done right <laughs> you haven't changed more beds you haven't washed and ironed any more sheets you haven't cleaned any more rooms you haven't cooked more breakfast you haven't done any more work believe me now <laughs> it's pretty cool isn't it really when you put it when you put it like that it's not that difficult to do isn't it amazing isn't it it's so amazing what guests will pay, will pay for when you provide a convenience okay it's the convenience they're paying for rather than the thing right it's what the thing does for them is what they're buying it's not the thing it's what the thing does for them either emotionally practically conveniently whatever it is that they need they will buy it if it fills a need for them so don't get caught up on the thing that you're selling think about what does this mean for my guests how am I making my guests lives easier by charging them for this thing okay make sense all right, so how do you do it? I'm sure that's your next question, isn't it? Okay, so what would you need to be doing to reach that goal, right? Well, in the short term, right, there's short term and long term strategies. Increase your prices today. Just do it. Test, see how much you can personally stand emotionally and psychologically because it is really in our heads. Take no notice of what anyone else is charging in your area. Focus on your own great hospitality, your great value, your unique experience that you offer to your guests. And then you don't need to worry about what anybody else is doing because everybody else has got their own money story going on as well that's preventing them from raising their prices. It's got nothing to do with what guests want. Next, start selling things instead of giving them away for free. Start doing that now. Start with one thing, but because you'll, you'll bump up against your own psychology with this, because you'll have to start selling, right? Right, because it's easy to give stuff away. It doesn't demand any growth. But when you start selling things, it demands growth in your own thinking and your own psychology. So allow that process to happen to you just by offering something. I'll give you an example. A client that we worked with recently, um, they, were, uh, they were giving bottles of wine away. When a guest asked, do you have any wine? They would just say, yes, here's a bottle. And then when they went through our process, you know, with moral support as well, because you need moral support, they just, it just tripped off their tongue. Certainly, we have red or white, um, and it's, it's 10, 10 pounds a bottle which one would you like and people say oh, I have the red one or they said I have the white one bang sale right it doesn't take many of those to start building up a revenue stream from a little thing like that 
they were just about fell off their chairs the first time they did this because they had no idea that people would pay. They had, were operating from the belief system, as we all do, right? At some point we do, operating from the belief system that they need to give stuff away in order to make guests happy. That is just not true. In fact, guests will be happier when they buy from you. We love to buy as humans. We love to buy. We don't want to be sold to, but we love to buy, right? And when people come and visit you with, you know, tourist dollars in their pocket, for example, they want, they're going to spend it with somebody. So they might as well spend as much of it as possible with you. And you, it's your job. It's our job as hospitality owners, you know, to offer them the opportunity to spend more money with you. Third, three things, right? Increase your prices today. Start selling things instead of giving them away for free today. And thirdly, start communicating with your past guests to invite them to return, which will cut out the OTAs over time, right? Some people still go back to booking.com, even though you've told them about all the benefits of Booking Direct and all of the cheap deals you've got going on when they book direct, they're not interested, right? That is not meeting their need. You've got to make booking with you directly part of their habitual process of booking. And that's your job, right? That's your job to do that. So the third thing is to start, begin to communicate with your past guests to invite them to return so that you are over time cutting out the OTAs, right? Those are three things that you can do in the short term. Okay. All right. So those are the short term. Now in the longer term, to go even higher than 25% increase and for your longer term security, here's five things that you need to be thinking about putting into place in your business. You, that number one is put systems in place to better take care of your guests and free up more of your time so you're working less, right? Systems are key. Systems can't take away the face-to-face -face hospitality, but they can back it up and make your life easier, okay? Number two, commit to building a strong online presence with lots of content. That means videos, posts, images regularly so that everywhere we go online, we see you, right? You're like everywhere because you know the the algorithms, the AI and all of those algorithm gods. You know when you go and look at something on the web and then you go on Facebook and you find an ad for the same thing. Or you go onto your, um, or, or you check your emails and you've got an email, somebody sent you an email about the same thing. That's your kind of reticular activating system at work because you're thinking about something. You, they, people have seen you online and they're thinking about you now and now they're seeing you everywhere, right? Commit if you are everywhere, right? If you're not everywhere or if you're not anywhere online, I've seen a lot of owners that aren't really anywhere online, not showing their faces, right? But if you are there, commit to building that strong online presence with lots of content, video posts, images, and followers, likes, and fans. Number three, become the face of your area, like the best source of information around so that when people think about your area, they're thinking of you. You need to do this offline, but, you, but most importantly, you need to commit to doing this online. If you want to cut out the OTAs, this is the way to go. You've got to have a strong online presence where you are recognizable across the platforms and that everywhere we see you, we know it's you. That's number three. Number four, Build an email list, simple. Just collect data on your guests. Collect principally their email so that you can do number five, which is communicate regularly. Communicate regularly, okay? So let me ask you, what might stop you from doing that, right? What might stop you? Well, let's take the first one, putting systems in place. You probably don't know what systems to use or how to go about that, 
and that's fine you need to do some research talk to me if you'd like to know more about that number two commit to building a strong online presence maybe you don't want to be online maybe you'd rather not be online maybe you you'd rather not show your face online maybe you'd rather not do videos or you're too shy or you you feel you don't have time you know you'll have stories about that going around in your head that stops you from doing that right it stops you or I don't understand how to do it or or what if I cock up or what if they don't like me you know all of these things are you know they're in all of our heads at some point number three become the face of your area what would stop you doing that right again I don't want to be on video I don't want to see me I look terrible my hair needs cutting um, I need to lose weight you know all of those stories <laughs> all of those stories would stop you from from being online if you're motivated if you're motivated and you've got good reasons then you know we need to overcome that right so building an email list what might stop you building an email list well you might think well um, yeah I, I don't know how to do that I don't want to send out emails you know people no one reads emails anymore you know no nobody nobody's gonna read my emails we're all bombarded with emails and so I don't want to be part of that you know I don't like I'm already getting too many emails all these kind of stories might be going on in your head as to why you might not want to build an email list or maybe you just don't understand how to do it and that will stop you right so if you want help with that then you know talk to me and I'll help you to do that and then communicate regularly what would stop you communicating with your past guests regularly well I don't have anything to tell them um, they I don't they don't want to hear from me you know I don't have anything to say I don't know how to say it um, I don't know how to send out emails I don't I don't I'm not techie so you know I don't know how to do it and you know all of this stuff goes on in our heads um, that prevent us from reaching our goal and in this case it's adding 25% to your revenue um, without working any harder just this in just this season so you know bring these things up into the open so that we can actually deal with them and just you know put them to rest so that you, you're not held hostage by these beliefs and thinking patterns which prevent you from adding an extra 25% to your revenue um, uh, over the next season so I hope that was useful for you I hope that you got some uh, something to think about and something to run with. Uh, again, if you want the tool that I use to calculate 50% 50, uh, 50 occupancy, five rooms at 100 a night on average, then just put yes, I'd like the tool in the comments below. below. Um, and if you want my uh, 50 ideas on what you can sell to people rather than giving stuff away, just put 50 ideas in the comments and I'll, I'll get that to you as well. So I hope that's helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions at all. Contact me privately if you want to talk about any of these points. If you feel that you're ready now to actually make that happen and you know put 25% onto your revenue this season, if you're ready to do that, then let me know and we can set up a free chat just to see if we're a good fit for you and if you're a good fit for us as well. So let me know if you're at that stage right now. In the meantime, I'll leave it there and enjoy the rest of your day.